okay so in this lecture we'll be talking about um, introduction to vectors okay so first we will define the two types of quantity so first we will define scalar quantity okay so a scalar quantity is a quantity so one that has nothing to do with a spatial dimension okay. so scalar quantity is a quantity that has nothing to do with spatial uh, dimensions so it, it is also it only has magnitude but no direction okay. but no direction okay so examples of scalar quantity so examples are length okay we have also time then we have temperature we have mass density um, charge and volume okay so all of these quantities are scalar so they only had they only have magnitude and they doesn't have direction so that's why a scalar quantity has nothing to do with spatial dimension because we see spatial that is that pertains to space so therefore there is a that is a three-dimensional space but scalar only has a magnitude so it could not describe a three-dimensional space but when it comes to computations or arithmetic operations of this type of quantities okay so scalar quantities are specified by ordinary numbers and add and subtract in the usual way so what does it mean so scalar quantity we could subtract or add them in the same manner that we are doing with um, common numbers so we could add them and subtract um, in the usual way okay so now we will go to another type of quanti quantity which is the highlight of this topic which is vector quantity okay so it is defined as one that can be specified completely only if provided with both magnitude and direction so vector quantity is a quantity that can be specified completely only if provided with both magnitude and direction so meaning a uh, vector quantity has a magnitude and a direction so example of these quantities okay sample 
we have this placement then we have also velocity then we have and this will be acceleration then we have force and momentum so these are the examples of a vector quantity okay now we we'll proceed to another term on this lesson which is all about resultant okay or we could call this one as the resultant of a vector okay so you can also have this one as the sum so it is a single vector single vector that would have the same effect this is the, the same effect as all the original vectors taken together okay so a resultant or a resultant of a vector is a single vector that would have the same effect as all the original vectors taken together so for example we have uh, vector a okay so we have vector a we should write this one clearly here so for example we have vector a then we combine that one so we pass vector b so the combined effect of this these two vectors is known as a resultant vector okay, so that is what a uh, resultant or a sum of a vector means it could also be uh, we will just write this one plus minus it could also be the um, the reaction or the combination of two opposite vectors in which the the effect of those two opposite vectors is also described in as a resultant vector okay So next we will go to representation of vectors. Okay, so how we represent vectors? Okay, so if we are going to write a vector, so a vector is usually represented by a capital letter and a half arrow on the upper side of the letter so we could we will name this one as vector a so if we have another letter here capital letter so this will be vector b so we we'll say this one so usually if you write r with an arrow this will be a resultant resultant vector okay now for example if our r if we take the absolute value of our resultant this will be equal to r so this now is a scalar if the letter has no arrow up so that is now a scalar so this will be equal to the size or the magnitude of the vector okay so this one now it is a scalar quantity of the resultant r which describes the size or the magnitude of the resultant vector okay so how we are going to compute the uh, the resultant of two vectors okay so there is one common method that one and that one is called the parallelogram Okay, the parallelogram method. So this is used in adding 
to vectors okay so the resultant of two vectors at any angle may be represented by the diagonal of a parallelogram okay, if you are if you are um, if you have um, if you have some knowledge on geometry so you know that a parallelogram is a quadrat a quadratic quadrilateral which has four uh, which has two of its sides so two pairs of he of its sides parallel to each other so that is a parallelogram okay so we'll try to have that one in a graph or in a drawing so for example we have vector a plus vector b is equals to vector r okay so if this is our vector a so we have this one vector a and maybe we could have this one here as our vector b so to get the uh, vector r or the resultant vector by parallelogram method so we need to rewrite first our vector a okay then we superimpose our vector b here okay this is our vector b then we just try to imitate this one the line okay to the side so parallel to that side so with a broken line and also transpose this one to this part okay so this line broken line here is based on this vector and this broken line here is based on this vector so we will have that one in yellow so that we have a dis distinction among the broken line okay so at this point this one here if we will create a line or a, a arrow okay we should have the two one much um okay so assuming that is that is a line that is straight okay so this will now be our vector r so this is what we called as a parallelogram method of course here we'll use our knowledge and tried trigonometry in solving this one so we have an angle this one then this one will be a considered as a triangle and cannot solve it, the value of our vector r or the resultant vector r okay next we will go to another uh, method uh, or the another um, operation on a vector which is the subtraction of a vector okay of two vectors so that so this is two vectors okay so for example we have vector a minus vector b so that is just the same adding two vectors vector a and vector b in which vector b is in the opposite direction so we could say that vector a plus negative vector B. So that is how we are going to subtract um, two vectors. Okay. Next, we will go to component. Okay. Component of a vector. Okay. So the component of a vector is the effective. Value in a given direction. Okay, so that is the component of a vector, or that is the scalar part of a vector. So, for example, we have a graph here. 
Okay. So this is our graph. And we have here our vector A. Okay, or we shall call that one as vector R. Okay, vector R. So this is a resultant vector. Okay. So the component of a vector vector R along the x-axis, which is x, this is y. So is it it is a scalar quantity. Okay. Scalar quantity. If we will not put any direction on it, but we could consider that also as a um, vector. So that is component vector R x. And for y, so it is now also a vector quantity, component vector R y. But but like I said, the effective value is a scalar quantity with just a unit vector which is will be discussed on um, uh, later on this video okay so so what is now the relationship between the vectors these three vectors okay so if we put an angle here so our the absolute value of the component vector of r in terms of x is equal to the absolute value of r cosine theta so using trigonometry and the absolute value of component vector y is equal to the absolute value of resultant vector r sine theta or we could say that rx is equals to r sine theta so the equivalent magnitude of our r and r y okay, so that is not sine but cosine it's cosine okay and r y is r sine theta so these are all vector uh, scalar and these are the absolute value of the component vectors okay so now we will proceed to the component method of adding vectors okay. component method of adding vectors okay so for example we have our vector r okay so we need to find the absolute value of our vector r so that is the absolute value is the size of its uh, or the magnitude of our vector r so we could solve that one we will just solve for r so this is the uh, the scalar quantity of our vector r so our r is equal to square root of rx squared so that is the component vector in terms of x so the absolute value ry squared plus rc squared of course there is a derivation for this one but we'll make this lecture short and we'll go directly to the formula so all of these quantities here are all scalar and if we are going to get the angle okay angle if you are going to plot our vector n in a two-dimensional um, coordinate system this will be our r this will be our theta this will be our x and r sub y so our theta so this will um, indicate the direction is equal to inverse tangent r y over r x okay so these are the formula in getting the uh, the resultant vector r in three components and if you are going to get the direction of a vector r in a two dimension uh, in a two um two dimension korean system so this is how we are going to get the angle of course there uh, like i said this is just an introduction so there is a 
um, much complex way of solving this one, much deeper way of solving uh, the component vector or the component method of adding two vectors or getting the resultant of vectors. But as of now, we will just focus it one because this is, this is just an introduction. Okay. Okay, so we will now proceed to unit vectors. Okay. Okay, unit vectors. So unit vectors have so unit vectors have magnitude have magnitude of one and are represented by a bold face symbol so a bold face symbol so probably it will be a, a letter symbol top with a carrot okay so the symbol for a carrot is this one is a carrot or some of the mathematicians will call that one as hat okay. so we have i hat so this is one of the unit vector in three-dimensional phase we have g hat and k hat so this is the unit vector for the x component so this is the unit vector for the y component and this is the unit vector for the z component okay so if we are going to get the magnitude of our i hat it is equal to one because the magnitude of a unit vector is one so it is the same with our g hat and it is also the same with our key hat which is equal also to one so that is unit vectors so if we are in a three-dimensional plane or a three-dimensional space because a plane is a two-dimensional and a space is a three-dimensional so if we are in a three-dimensional um, space we have three unit vectors each representing the components of a vector in terms of x y and z and their magnitude is equal to one okay now we'll go to the cartesian coordinate system okay so we know the cartesian coordinate system as a as a system or a system which has two axes we have the x which is the horizontal axis and the y so this is the x and the y axis and our point p will have a coordinate of p in which that is here the distance from the origin zero to this point here which is p x and y okay so this is will be p y which is the distance from zero to the uh, point in terms of y okay so that is p y okay now if we are now uh, tackling with vectors so they are usually in three-dimensional space so that's why we have also a equivalent three-dimensional cartesian coordinate system and we have this one or the other term for this one is the rectangular okay before i forgot the other term okay rectangular coordinate system okay so we have the 3d okay so this will be the 3d okay 
okay so this will be our x y and z so if you have here your p so your p must have a component of px py and pz so because our p now will be a vector okay and if we are going to represent our p mathi mathematically as a vector so we will write vector p times this one is equals to p x then we get the unit vector for x which is i hat plus p y which an unit vector for y from the previous slide that is j hat okay plus p z k hat so this is how we are going to grab our vector p and this is how we are going to write our vector p so having this knowledge now we'll go to another way of adding and subtracting our vectors using the mathematical method okay so adding and subtracting of vectors by mathematical okay we should write this one clearly here by mathematical method okay so for example we are given with vector a which is equal to a x i hat plus uh, this will be a y a sub y j hat plus um plus a sub z k hat okay then our we have also vector b which is bx i hat plus by j hat plus bz k hat okay so if you are going to get the sum of vector a and vector b all you need to do is to add the component vectors so add the component vectors for x the component vectors for y and the component vectors for z so what will happen now is we have ex plus bx then we put here the com uh, unit vector times plus ay plus by we put here the component vector plus az quantity bz k hat same as subtraction so we have vector 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 a a minus vector b so just uh, subtract the components so subtract the x component of b from a so we have e x minus bx then put the unit vector so i hat plus a y minus b y j hat plus a z minus minus b z k hat okay so that is how we are going to add and subtract vectors by the mathematical method or approach okay so before we go on to the example we have a last definition which is all about vectors so we will go now to displacement okay so what is displacement so we have a scenario here so when an object when an object 
moves from one point to another the displacement is the vector from the initial point to the final point or location. So when an object moves from one point to another, the displacement is the vector from the initial point to the final point so this the displacement is independent independent of the actual distance traveled okay so with regards to the actual distance travel of the vector so the act the displacement is just the the uh, the vector from the initial point to the final point so if you are going to grab that one sample okay so we have a three-dimensional coordinate system here so we have x this is our y and this is our z Okay, so if our first point is here, we we'll call this point as um, Z. I oh, know not Z, but maybe we could call this one as A. Okay, point A. Here is point B. So if uh, object move from this to this point, so that is the displacement. So this is now the displacement. Because that is only the distance that is only the the displacement is the vector from the initial to the um, final location not the distance traveled so we are getting the vector of these two the combination vector of these two so that usually it will be um, the we'll try to subtract vector a vector a from b so that will be the displacement not the distance travel nor the distance from each of the component vectors but the vector with regards to the initial from the to the final location of our vector of course it will be further um, discussed on our next topic Okay, so now we will have an example in adding and subtracting vectors. Okay, example. So, we have here So, we have given vector A is equal to 3i hat then plus 4 j hat plus 7 k hat then our vector b is equal to 9 i hat plus 5 j hat minus 8 k hat okay so we need to find the find vector a plus vector b okay so we have here our solution okay solution okay so vector a plus vector b so we only need to add the component vectors so the partner numbers for our unit vectors because as of now we don't have the uh, representation of our vectors okay so the partners for example if we write i here so we just copy 3 then plus 9 okay 
then you add plus so we have 4 so it will be plus 5 j hat so all of we just add all of the numerical a uh, part of our unit vectors but like I said the proper way for doing this one is to add the component vectors of uh, the component vectors x y and z of our given vectors okay plus so we have seven okay that will be plus now this is negative eight so we have negative eight k hat so we just do basic addition so this will be 12 i hat plus 9 j hat that will be 7 minus 8 so that would be negative 1 k hat so simplifying this further so our vector a plus vector b will be equal to 12 i hat plus 9 j hat nine j hat okay nine j hat plus oh no but minus so this is negative so it will be minus so we could omit one k hat and this is now our answer for the first example okay so we will now proceed to the next example so we will just write first our example okay we have if vector a is equal to negative 12 i plus 25 j hat plus 13 k hat and vector b is equal to negative 3 j hat plus 7 k hat okay find the resultant when vector a vector a is subtracted from vector b okay so if vector a is equals to negative 12 i hat plus 25 j hat plus 13 k hat and b vector b is equal to negative 3 j hat plus 17 k hat So we need to find the resultant when a is subtracted when vector a is subtracted from vector b okay so we have our solution okay so a is subtracted from b so we have vector b minus vector a so because of the term from so we need to subtract vector a from b so that's why it will become b vector b minus vector a first we just maybe we should write first our given vector okay, before we go that much so that we will have a much clearer um, view of the vector so this is the 12 i hat plus 25 j hat plus 13 k hat Okay, and our B is equal to negative 3 J hat so we need to align this one to the J so 13 uh, 3 3 J hat plus 7 K hat so we will now go to vector vector b minus vector a so this will be equal to negative no so b so for b so the the component vector g uh, i hat is zero so we have zero minus negative 12 
okay then we have so this one as plus okay then we have negative 3 minus 25 j hat so we forgot to put here the i hat then we have plus 7 because 7 is on the vector b minus 13 k hat okay and our answer is to have a new um, space here so vector b minus vector a is equal to so 0 minus negative 12 so this will be plus so that will be plus 12 or positive 12 so 12 I hat then negative 3 minus uh, 25 so that will be negative 28 so we have here minus 28 J hat then we have 7 minus 13 so that will be negative 6 so we will have negative 6 K hat and this will be our answer Okay, so that will be all for this lecture. If you have any questions, so you can comment on our comment section of this lecture. Okay.